N. Krithika Lakshmi, currently working as Associate Professor in Satyabama University, Chennai. She has done her Bachelor of Architecture from Periyar Maniyammai College of Technology for Women, Bharadidasan University, Trichy, and Postgraduate Diploma in Business Administration from ICFAI University, Hyderabad. She has also done Master of Architecture in Building Management from Satyabama University, Chennai. She has been involving in developing and delivering lectures for undergraduates and postgraduate students using innovative teaching practices. She has attended several conferences and have made presentations in specialized subject area in architecture. Welcome to UGC lecture series for a Bachelor of Architecture program. It's on the, this is on the subject building services part 2. We will be looking into uh, electrical and lighting and uh, this particular series uh, we will be looking into illumination and lighting. The topics we will be covering are methods of mounting lamps, lighting control, luminaries, classification and lumen method for design. So, there are various methods of uh, mounting lamps, mounting in the sense fixing the lights. So, uh, based on the way you fix the light, you give names for the lamps. Uh, it is called the ceiling dome and under ceiling dome we have open ceiling dome and enclosed ceiling dome. Then you have recessed light and surface mounted light. Under surface mounted light you have various uh, features like pendant light, scone, track lighting, under cabinet light, emergency lighting or exit lighting, high and low bay lighting, strip lighting and soffit. Now, coming to uh, we will see each of the things in detail like this is the ceiling dome. You see in the picture the, this is the light that is fixed to the ceiling and it has a cover on top of it that is what we call it as dome. The light source is hidden behind a translucent dome, Transcluent is you, light will pass through that. This will be made typically of glass, uh, now it is coming in uh, fiber also, it, it will be either clear or it can be frosted depending on the type of light you need. Now, this is another type of uh, ceiling dome. <coughs> uh, this is to show that this uh, can be flush mounted, flush mounted is that can be in line with the ceiling or it can be you know uh, pushed down that is uh, one way of doing this and then you have your recess lighting. Recess lighting is if you see here there will be a protective uh, housing on this. So, you see if this is going to be the room this is particularly called co fixture because you take it inside and the light diffuses to the ceiling and then it is reflected here. So, this is what we call a recessed uh, lighting the protective housing will be uh, behind the ceiling or wall. So, only the fixture will be exposed. Now, the ceiling mounted uh, version this type of it is always called as a down light because the light comes down. So, uh, cans, cove light and troughers all come under this category. Then you have your surface mounted light. Surface mounted lights will be like the uh, covering is not the housing is not flush or it is not covered. So, you see pendant is it, it just uh, no, uh, hangs down from the ceiling. So, this is a kind of an indirect pendant where the light is uh, no, reflects to the ceiling and then comes down. This is uh, both ways direct and indirect partly it comes down and partly it goes to the ceiling and then comes down. So, this is kind of a uh, surface mounted pendant light and then scone. Scones are like uh, your uh, wall mounting. Uh, it uh, provides up and down lighting like it can you know uh, you have two directions the light can come from a scone. Uh, this is to usually used to illuminate any artwork or any architectural details you know uh, for that you will use this uh, particularly like uh, uh, in hallways or you uh, know uh, if you if, if you place you want an overhead lighting you can replace that with the uh, scones. Then track lighting, track lighting is uh, this one where you have uh, a track heads will be there, uh, a railing like this will be there and lights will be fixed from here, the wirings uh, will be running through these pipes. So, it can be positioned anywhere, uh, the light can be positioned anywhere along the uh, track, it, uh, the track is providing the electric power. So, you can shift this also. Now, next is your under cabinet lighting, as the name says this will be under the cabinet. So, if this is going to be your cabinet and below that the light will be fixed and the uh, down lighting will be provided here. Uh, generally under cabinet is like uh, provided uh, you know in uh, work workspaces or in kitchens you will generally use this under cabinet lighting. Then comes your emergency lighting or exit sign. So, this uh, emergency lighting generally it will not have a electric power this will always have a battery backup. So, that in case of emergencies you can see only these lights glowing up because it has a battery backup. Even if the main power fails you can this will guide you to the uh, exit. Then you have high end bay lighting, 
this is like uh, in warehouses or industrial buildings you will have these kinds of lighting it is everything is exposed this is like a, a halfway pendant where it is not completely uh, hanging from the ceiling but it is fixed to the ceiling this is called high end bay it, uh, these lights will be you no know, always fixed in a bay like in rows uh, similar to that you have come something called strip lighting this will be like uh, long strips that uh, continuously uh, for the area it will the light will continue uh, see if you see this picture you can see it is a fluorescent light so you can various colors in this so all through the ceiling the light will be continuous in a strip form so that is why we call it strip lighting then you have soffit soffit is a uh, usually we use it for a decorative uh, thing for the walls to decorate the walls if you have any textured wall you want to highlight the texture you use soffit soffit is the underneath part of a roof so the light will be placed there so it is called soffit lighting so it will give a very dramatic effect for the building now coming to the luminous classification uh, luminous are nothing but the light fixtures the housing component the filament i mean the bulb everything put together we call it as luminar so it is classified under the based on its the function of the light the type of the lamp the installation method and the percentage of light output whether it is the light is coming above or it is coming below uh, so, uh, in this the lamp type and the installation method we have already seen the lamp type is what uh, the thing we saw in the last lecture the in the incandescent light and the electric discharge lamps all those things. Installation method is what we just uh, saw how it is fixed, how you fix the lights. Now, we look into these two things the light function and the percentage of light output and you look at the uh, function based on the function you can call it as ambient or the general lighting, task lighting, accent lighting, informational lighting or guidance lighting and decorative lighting. Ambient lighting is uh, the general lighting that we provide for any place like workplace or a residential area. So, the, it will illuminate the overall space. So, it will give a very comfortable uh, brightness, there will not be any glare and you can walk and see things there safely. So, uh, generally here you use a pendant type, you see there is a thing uh, hanging from the ceiling. So, mostly you will be using a, a pendant type fixtures and down lights, chandeliers and ceiling mounted fixtures also will be used for this. Now, coming to task lighting. This is a directional lighting, so it, the light will be directed to one particular point. So, it is aimed at a specific task, your uh, table lamps uh, will be a good example for task lighting. So, here specifically only to this area you will have the light and uh, in particularly in labs or workshops where they are you know doing very uh, critical work or very detailed work you will be using a task lighting, it is focused only on the task. Now, this uh, can be provided that either a recessed or track lighting will be used for this. Uh, pendant and under cabinet lighting also I told you workspaces you can have under cabinet. So, if you have a workspace and there is a cabinet on top the task lighting will be provided below the uh, cabinet and uh, portable uh, desk and floor lamps also we can use for task lighting. Uh, the main thing is because it is going to be very close to the working surface uh, there, there you should be careful there should not be any glare distracting glare or shadows should not fall. So, and it should be bright enough so that uh, there should not be any eye strain then comes here accent lighting. Accent means you accentuate that you give an extra uh, feeling to it. So, this is again a kind of a directional lighting because it focuses on one point and it adds drama to a place that means it gives interesting uh, you know ambience to the place and it creates visual interest also. So, this is like textured wall that you want to highlight or you know like if you have any um, wall hangings or something art uh, works that has to be highlighted you provide a uh, accent lighting to that. Now, this accent lighting if you, have, if you have really want to make it effective you should make sure that uh, the light is at least 3 times more than the general lighting present in that area then only the focus will be more otherwise it will not give that accenting feeling and uh, this is usually provided by a uh, resist and track lighting. Now, this is a track lighting and uh, wall mounted uh, picture lights also will be a part of this. Now, informational lighting. Uh, this we also called guidance lighting because it is to see uh, you know in case of emergencies or if you are going to a new place these lights are going to guide you through the place. So, it you will be taken to the place safely mostly this is used in your emergency lighting and uh, this is functional also it creates a dramatic statement like uh, how you can create is if there is going to be a flight of stairs and you can set these kind of lights you no know, uh, underneath the stairs that will you know enhance the pathway it will guide you this is the path that you have to take for the staircase. So, like that you can enhance the aesthetics using a information lighting also. 
Now, then comes your uh, decorative lighting. Decorative lighting is like the fixtures will attract attention towards the uh, fixture itself. So, uh, large strips can be used, pendants, chandeliers, all those things, you know, these things all comes under your uh, decorative lighting. In many places, we also use the decorative lighting for general lighting also. Now, uh, according to the percentage of light output, we are going to see the classification. One is the direct lighting, semi-direct, general diffuse lighting, semi-indirect and indirect lighting. So, what happens here is direct lighting means the luminous direct the light 90 to 100 percent of the output downward. So, if you see this light is on the ceiling. So, you can see the light is fully downward, you do not see any light on the ceiling. So, this is the direct lighting from the, uh, the light is coming directly from the source. So, uh, this distribution will vary depending on the concentration of the light and the material reflector material that is inside because without the reflective material you cannot have a downward lighting. Then finish contour and texture of the uh, place and then uh, the troughs and down lighting will come under uh, your direct lighting. Uh, reflected glare and shadows will be a problem in this because it is directed towards only one uh, direction. So, more focus will be there unless close spacing is not there you will have more of a uh, glare and shadow problem in this type of lighting. Then your semi direct lighting where you see here the distribution is uh, predominantly downward, but there is also some upward lighting like 60 to 90 percent is downward the rest is upward. So, there is a, this upward component what will it will do it will illuminate the ceiling. So, in the previous one we saw the ceiling was dark, but when you have a semi direct lighting a part uh, of the light will be uh, illuminating the ceiling also. So, uh, when you are using close to ceiling mountain, if you are going to use a very close to ceiling mountain and it is going to be a semi direct lighting, then you should make sure that the ceiling is not becoming very bright. Then a general diffuse lighting, this will be like uh, both the sides you will have light like upward and the downward, you see the arc of light here, no, it is equal. So, it is like 40 to 60 percent of the total luminar output will be here. Uh, this will have the both the characteristics of direct lighting and uh, indirect lighting like it also has uh, negative points like shadows and glare will be there and uh, positive effects like the ceilings are also illuminated. Then semi indirect lighting you see here this is a direct light, but all the most of the light is focused on the ceiling only a part comes down. So, it is a reverse of your indirect lighting. So, 60 to 90 percent of the output is upward. So, the downward component will be giving your luminance. So, that will be uh, more, more or less similar to whatever it is reflected from your ceiling. Then you have indirect lighting here 90 to 100 percent will be focused on top. Uh, you see all the lighting is focused on top not much will be coming here. So, uh, if you really plan it well and design it really well uh, this will be the primary source of illumination for the uh, entire uh, space because uh, you will not have any shadows at all because everything is focused upwards. So, light is not going to fall on any objects and you create shadows. So, this is a very uh, effective uh, lighting when properly designed. Now, we saw all the different types of lights. Now, there is something called lighting control. You have to control this lighting. You cannot have you know a complete direct lighting in all, every time. So, what are the lighting controls? Uh, generally, lighting controls initially it was started to use to create moods to have different type of uh, ambience. Now, they are also used as for a part of high quality energy efficient lighting system. Now, we are all about energy efficiency and all those things. So, this lighting control will go a, a way ahead to save energy. So, it integrates daylight and electric light sources to provide a comfortable and visually interesting environment. So, your control system will integrate your uh, daylighting and your uh, electric light source together and it will modify the light and give you the required light automatically. So, uh, why we use these light controls to achieve a high quality energy efficient system? To give the occupants the control of lighting, you need to give the control to the occupants and provide appropriate lighting, minimize the glare and you have to balance the surface brightness, enhancing the surrounding architecture. So, uh, you also turn an environment for the individual occupants or if it is going to be a group's uh, visibility. When you do that, your productivity increases, I mean the work whatever they do will be even more better. They are also used to save energy. How you save energy is like uh, when you save energy, you extend the life of the lamps and ballast, then reduce the amount of uh, power used during the peak demand. So, when it is going to be very uh, the peak, uh, peak demand in the sense, everybody is going to use the light at the same time. So, that is what we call uh, peak demand. So, the power that is going to be used at the time can be reduced if you have a control and then reduce the number of hours per year that the lights are on. 
So, if you have a control you can switch it on and off whenever required. Reduce the internal heat gains. So, you know uh, part of uh, heat generated in the inside a room or any space is from these lights. So, that also can be controlled. Lighting controls also provide flexibility, lighting flexibility and uh, multi use rooms and all we have this because it is going to be a big conference room. The conference will not be you know entire uh, room will not be filled every time. So, depending on the number of people using the room you can alter the uh, lights. Uh, turn lights on with the help of exterior motion directors and interior occupancy sensors. Now, when you say lighting control it is also completely automated nowadays. So, when you have a exterior motion detecting sensors in the lights it will automatically turn on the light and switch it off when the person leaves. That is uh, one of the advantage of having lighting control. Now, when you take up this lighting control you have the standard on and off switch or relays then you what we saw the occupancy sensors the daylight sensors or clock switches. Then you have the manual and automatic dimming devices, then you have centralized uh, controls also are there. So, standard on and off switches is what we usually have switch on and off. Uh, this can be used to turn groups of lights on and off together, if it is going to be an office you need not have one switch for every light it can be grouped together and can be used. Creative design options can be developed with a simple tool like you can make a creative out of it like uh, some lamps in each fixture you no know, can be the you can the grouping may be interesting you can make it interesting like each fixture may, it can be uh, switched together or it can be switched as a group. Uh, the lighting near the window can be turned off during the day time because you no know, daylight will be more. So, like that you can uh, design it and uh, have the circuit arranged like that. Then you have occupancy sensors. Uh, occupancy sensors basically it, it has three functions it automatically turns on when a room is occupied. Then it keeps the light on without uh, interruption till the person is there whoever is using the uh, room. And then it turns off the light when uh, after when the, there is a preset period if you have a preset time it turns off automatically or when the person is uh, vacated. Based on various characteristics we have again uh, no types in occupancy sensors uh, a few of the thing will be passive infrared sensors. So, the lights will have these sensors these sensors will detect the motion or the people who are coming in. So, these are triggered by the movement of heat emitting body through the field of view. So, when there is a heat emitting body coming inside so it will detect that ok a human person has entered. So, the light will switch on otherwise you have ultrasonic sensors. So, this will emit an inaudible sound pattern you now as we saw like uh, light you now we cannot see all the waves that is uh, you know present around us even sounds we cannot hear all the sounds that is around us. So, uh, this ultrasonic sensors will give an inaudible sound pattern. So, when there is a moving object that pattern will be disturbed and that will pick up that uh, signal and it will switch on the light. Now, in this you have daylight sensors particularly if you see that is also called photo sensors. This is used to uh, turn lights on, uh, on and off automatically depending on the daylight available. So, when you set the daylight uh, lum illumination or luminance uh, value it will uh, switch on and off based on that uh, level. So, that is again automatic. So, this uh, daylight dimming can maintain the desired light level while providing a smooth and barely noticeable transition from or to from a electric. So, if you are going to be like uh, you know when you are setting the daylight thing it has to transfer to electric when there is not enough daylight. So, that transmission will be uh, even more better when you give daylight dimming option also along with your uh, in your daylight sensors. So, the dimming option will be like there will be gradual change from you know whatever daylight is there to when the electric, electric uh, lights come on there will be a gradual change. Then clock switches this is like you can set the period of time. So, you know only if uh, the people are going to work from 9 to 5 you can set the time for 9 to 5 and then the uh, light will switch on automatically at 9 and switch off at 5. So, this is specially used for uh, turning off photo cell activated exterior lighting that is your solar lighting which we have in exterior areas we generally have this that we can switch it on like uh, after the daylight is gone we know the when it generally goes say 5 30 or 6 that time you can switch it on and morning around that uh, 5 30 or 6 you can switch it off. So, you no need any manual people to go and switch on the exterior lighting it will be automatic for that you can use these clock switches then manual dimming. Manual dimming will be like there is more uh, control for the occupant or the person who is using the light. So, he can reduce the you know, amount of uh, light that is coming for his work depending on his usage. So, it provides the flexibility to instantly change the characteristics. So, if you say put everything automatic there is everything preset you the user does not have any control over it. If it is going to be manual thing it has a flexibility to instantly change and it gives a very comfortable degree of control over the environment. 
even in dimming you have a remote control uh, this is like another form of manual you do not have to go to the toward the light and do it you can use it as a remote as you use here a remote for your TV can whatever you are wherever you are you can use a remote and you can have the features from that. So, here they use infrared and radio frequency technology similar to your uh, television remotes uh, and then uh, when you say remote control you can have a multi zone control if it is going to be a huge office area you can have a, a zones and depending on the zone you can have the uh, control can be done using the remote. Now, centralized controls uh, this is used again automatically to turn on and off uh, this is particularly under certain load conditions. So, centralized uh, controls will be like for huge uh, offices or you know shopping areas they will be using centralized controls uh, particularly you now the, here they say conference room or a building wide scale. So, if you want to have a control in that scale you can have a centralized control. They also integrate lighting controls with other building systems such uh, mechanical systems and security system uh, like the centralized controls will be integrated in the sense along with the uh, building security system it will be interlinked. Maybe uh, if there is a fire or something uh, all the electricity when it gets cut off like these lights also will go off. So, something like that kind of an arrangement can be made when you have a centralized control. Now, when you see all these things we know we have so many types of uh, lights available, lamps available, so many factors to be considered before selecting a uh, light for a particular task. Now, how do you calculate what kind of light or how many I mean kind of light again depends on the task and what number of lights you have to use in a particular area or a room. So, for that you have uh, many calculations, but a very well known and uh, very you know uh, tried and tested uh, calculation is your lumen method of lighting design. So, here the lumen method will be used to determine the number of lamps that should be installed for a given area or room. This is a very common technique used in lighting design and um, the light fittings for this whatever we calculate will be mounted only overhead and it will be in regular pattern. So, that is one limitation that we have here. When coming to uh, this type of uh, lumen method you should have uh, you know you should know certain uh, details like uh, you should know the luminous flux output what is the lumens of each lamp that you are planning to uh, use in the uh, room as well as the details of the luminars and the room surfaces what is the surface because the surface is going to reflect the light and that is what we are seeing it. So, what type of surface is there and what will be the reflecting ability of the surface all those details has to be uh, gathered in first and usually the illuminance is already specified. So, we know we when we say this particular uh, task if it is going to be office you need so much of uh, illuminance like for office it you need 500 lux for kitchen you need 300 lux. So, that is already there like a standard or a thumb rule you can say. So, the designer chooses suitable luminaires to fix that uh, you know uh, purpose and uh, use and then they will uh, find out how many required. So, this is a formula you have to determine the number of lamps. So, E is equal to small n into capital N F into U f n L L f in A. The explanation is E is the illuminance level required what illuminance level is required that is already given here. N is the number of lamps in each luminar we are talking about one single lamp see what uh, number of lamps together can also form a luminar like in your chandelier too many uh, lamps you can see in one chandelier. So, there are number of lamps in each luminar and capital N will be the number of luminars. So, if you have uh, 5 lamps in one luminar how many luminars like that you are going to have and then area at working plane height if the desk height is going to be a working plane height what is the area that will be covered at that particular height. Then F will be the average luminous flux from each lamp. So, each lamp has its own uh, luminous flux level that has that average should be taken then you have utilization factor and light loss factor. We will see this in detail how you actually go about it. So, first what we do is we divide the uh, entire room into uh, 3 sections basically one is a floor cavity, one is a room cavity and one is a ceiling cavity. So, in H is you are going to be a total height the uh, distance from your height uh, from your ceiling to the uh, luminar that will be your ceiling cavity height and the height from your uh, luminar to your you know, working plane that will be your room cavity height and then from your working space to the floor is your floor cavity height. You need to know these details first this will be your first uh, step you divide the room into layers and cavities. Then second step is you determine the cavity ratios by formulas. Now, each uh, cavity whatever we divided it has its own formula like uh, RCR is your uh, room uh, cavity ratio room cavity ratio is 5 into HRC HRC is the height height between the R and C 
here you see here HRC and uh, you have formulas for all the three cavity ratios and you calculate this and you arrive at CR. Now, this CR this is the effective ceiling and floor cavity reflectance we have to find. For this you already have a table uh, formed by uh, Illuminating Engineering Associate of, Associate of uh, North America. They have uh, all the values for you know for particular uh, cavity ratio what will be the reflectance value that is already that we can take it from a table. Then for this you select the CU from fixture manufacturers data CU is your coefficient of utilization whatever fixture you are going to use the manufacturer will have given this is the CU of this particular lamp. So, you take that uh, CU also now you put all these together first you have to find F, F is E into A by CU into LLF. So, this light loss factor now that is the final thing that you have to find it is the depreciation factor we saw what is the depreciation factor that is the uh, loss that is uh, that you have from the luminar when it was new and after some time. So, that is LLD into LDD, LLD is lamp luminar depreciation and LDD is luminar dirt depreciation because the collection of dirt there will be a depreciation and the lumen will drop after continuous usage. So, that has to be also factored into the calculation. So, this is how you uh, calculate uh, and find out uh, what is the. So, you have all the details now here you have found out F you know UF, LLF you know the area N and E. So, with all these things you can find out what is the number of lamps either this N or this N. This is how you calculate uh, design and find out the number of thing needed. Now, when you do all these things there is another thing you have to have in mind called room reflectance. This is generally expressed in percentage. Uh, so, if you see this uh, picture you see whatever light is coming on they, it will be reflected by the objects or whatever uh, surface it comes into contact with. So, when it is reflected only 80 percent is reflected 10 percent will be scattered or absorbed by the object and 10 percent of the light will be transmitted. So, this is the phenomenon behind your room reflectance the difference uh, uh, between uh, absorbed or transmitted by the uh, surface that is what we call reflectance. So, if you take uh, this is again a coefficient uh, CU coefficient of utilization values you have this. So, if you take this every uh, surface will have its own reflectance if you take a floor cavity reflectance will be 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 it is going to be a, a no, table the task eliminance is 0 0.1 for walls for each and everything it is already uh, done based on the uh, material. So, with this uh, room reflectance value we take it into you know uh, account and then we calculate the uh, coefficient of utilization and then you find the number of uh, lumens required. So, now uh, with this we come to the summary of this lecture whatever uh, the things that we have come across is uh, the various methods of mounting lights we have seen mounting lights is fixing the lights that has been explained. We understood what are the classifications the luminaires or the light fixtures are based on like function and direction and the various types in that and various light controls also we went through automatic and, and manual. And finally, we saw what is the method of calculation when you design a for a lighting and uh, the uh, lumen method also was explained elaborately. So, from this uh, we will be able to answer uh, questions like what are the different uh, ways lights can be mounted or fixed and what is the classification luminous carried out we have four classification that has to be done. Then explain about lighting control so what is the lighting control how is the system all those things and then yeah, uh, right in detail the calculation of light using lumen method this is a uh, very important question that has been asked uh, several times. So, uh, with this uh, lecture uh, we conclude this thank you.